Flexibility studies are designed to help you get great tone in all registers of your instrument. Here I'm going to be working on a variation of the Remington exercise for the brass players that are watching this and uh, for the flutists um, I'm using pages 15 through 22, 22 of the Moise de la Sonorite. You might have this book. Um, it's a great wealth of information but, and a wonderful tool, but you have to know how to use it. You do not need to have this book to do this exercise. The exercise starts on one note and then goes upwards or downwards through the range of your instrument. You can decide what is going to work best for you and your particular instrument. This is an exercise, an example of what it looks like in the flute book. In this video, I'm going to show you eight different ways to practice this same exercise. Einstein says the definition of insanity is doing the same thing over and over again and expecting a different result. As musicians, we have to practice differently in order to get better results. So, um, the first way that we're going to look at this is just to take simple attacks on each of these notes. So I'm going to begin with just a middle register F and actually let's do an E because it's harder. An E natural and try and, and get the tone really centered, really focused, a block of sound is the first way that I'm going to practice it going upwards. First I get that sound right where I want it. And I would continue on going up uh, farther, all the way up to high C is what this has written at. I'm going to go up to the octave right now and go on. solid tone on every single note. You have to sort of think about the tone before you play it. You know, where you're going to aim your airstream, how that sound is going to, how are you going to produce that best sound possible on each note and sort of find that placement for all the notes. Um, as, as you notice, sometimes I had a, a note that cracked here or there. I would go back and, and work on that note and make sure that I've got that interval firmly planted so that I know when I come back to it the next time that I know where it is, or at least that's the goal. For this exercise, you want to make sure that you're practicing it slowly enough. Okay? I would suggest setting a metronome at maybe like 72 and practicing one note per beat. So you're really hearing the attack, the decay, and then you have to restart again for that next note. So probably even slower than what I played it, sort of doing it in fast forward for this video. The next exercise that I would do with this is to try uh, the same thing with a ka attack. Okay, so the back half of your double tongue would be, you know, either a ta ka or a da ga, but that back half of your double tongue is what you're going to do. Let's go ahead and choose something a little bit more difficult, maybe um, a G sharp in the low register. So we're going to find that sound wherever you find your best sound, and then we're going to use a k to start every note, not taka, but just k, just the back half. Okay, at first this might, might come out fuzzy with your tone until you figure out how you can get that k sound to, to create the same tone quality as you have with the ta sound. So, that's ta, ta, ta. And here's ka, ka, ka. You shouldn't be able to hear a difference, okay? I went ta, 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 ka, 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 ta, 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 ka, ka, ka. And it should be the same tone quality. Performers work years to get this to happen. So keep working at it and try and get that center of the sound. 
Again, we would do this uh, upwards and then down through the instruments of and make sure you find that center with the cup. Again, I'm working very slowly, making sure that I'm placing the airstream, my embouchure, everything, the vowel shape inside the mouth in the correct position to make this work. The last way that you can practice this uh, articulated is to use a ha sound. I think this is probably the most difficult. It's probably right there with the uh, ka sound in the back half of your double tongue. Um, but this doesn't use the tongue at all to produce the sound. Okay, so I'm going to try one up in the higher register to start out with. Let's try this high G, and we're just going to use a ha, just a breath attack, no tongue. It's going to be a little less clear than the ta ta. You can hear a very clear point to the beginning of the sound, but here I'm going to go ha. The goal is to get it again, a solid sound, beautiful tone all the way through. So I'm starting on that high G. And then I go downwards. This is a good time to work on that support and, and pushing. I actually work on pushing the stomach. It's a good ab exercise. You can just go and, and take that air and sort of push in on the stomach as you're exhaling. It gives you that little extra support as you're going through and doing this. And then you would go work all the way down to the lower register. The next way that you can practice these are with uh, slurs ascending. So we're going to start with uh, a low note, let's try low D, and we're going to do just ascending slurs. So I'm going to tongue on that D every time. Here's. You can do this with or without vibrato, I'm choosing to use with vibrato right now. quality of the slur, you don't want to have two separate notes, but you want to have one joined sound through the slur. So when I go, it's not, you want to have one clear sound all the way through. It's almost like we pulled that G out of the D all the way through. And then you, you go continue upwards. Another thing you want to be looking and listening for is intonation, of course. Make sure that that ascending interval is high enough, that you get to that top note high enough. You can use a tuner during this. Always you've got to be thinking tone quality, pitch, and, and just any sort of control with, with the embouchure and um, the air speed and lip pressure, all of those things you need to make sure that you're focusing on to get the greatest sound that's in tune. The other side of this would be to do descending slurs. So instead of on, on the D, I'm going to do instead of that way where I'm going D, ya, D, ya, da, 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 I'm going to do ta, T, ya, T, ya. great sound all the way throughout, making sure you're coming back to the same D every time. Okay, the same tone quality, same pitch, same everything, and with a great slur that's connecting all of those. This gets more difficult when you get up into the higher range, let's say when you're taking two octave leaps. You 
you notice at the end, I still, I went from the C sharp up to the D, C up to the D, and, and back to the end. You can modify this in many different ways. One way would be to um, figure out how you're going to do the dynamics. So um, the hardest way is to do a, uh, from a low note, if you're slurring upwards to a high note, to do a forte and then decrescendo up to piano. So it's not too bad in the low register. But as you get higher, you know it's going to get harder. Here's, I'm going to do a D to G. sacrifice anything with the tone and obviously the pitch needs to remain accurate throughout. The last way that we're going to look at this is uh, to practice doing the uh, reverse dynamic thing but we're going to start in the high register and, and go uh, descending. So let's take our least favorite note, high E, and we're going to go uh, descending and try and do a um, piano to a forte crescendo. So. And then we try and, and go uh, further down. Here's the octave E. Obviously, that one's not in tune, so I gotta make sure I've got those E's in tune. You can use your ear first and check it with the tuner. So now I try and do the dynamics. live room that I'm playing in, but um, I, I am trying to articulate that high E when I'm descending. Another way to practice this would be to do it all slurred. Moise has this exercise written in triplets, so I would go with that pattern and try really hard to keep maintain the triplets. So triplet, triplet, re, re, and. In here you're practicing the upward slurs and the downward slurs on every beat which is really helpful and really works out all of these um, flexibility issues again you want to get ooey gooey slurs all the way through you want to pull the sound upwards down but maintaining a great tone and also the pitch has to be accurate. As I go through this exercise, it becomes harder to keep the dynamic in the same level with, between the low note and the high note. Work to get that all the way through, maybe at a mezzo forte for both the high notes and the low note here. I would recommend practicing these flexibility studies for maybe 15 or 20 minutes every day. You can pick two or three exercises to go through on a particular day and then try and rotate them through. Also, make sure that you're not doing the same notes every day. Start on different notes, maybe pick one high register note, one low register, maybe a middle register note, but make sure that you're rotating through this as you work through on your flexibility. Good luck and happy practicing.